Um, wait, did Wacko wipe? Yeah, I'm curious if he resets here or not. Like it's another Brawly wipe. Yeah, and this Craggy, I think this Craggy is less small, and I think he can crit his way out of this. I wonder if he still resets. Probably has to, right? I guess, like, he wins because he can finish it off with this Seeder, right? But, yeah. you know, what cost? Wacko is the second seat. person to beat Brawly. It's crazy, too, because I felt like Wacko was, like, in the mi like midfield, kind of, all for the first, like, couple hours. And he's really yeah. pulled ahead in this, like, last hour or two. Like, that's... Pokemon Run and Bonn, a ROM hack made by Dexa, one of the most talented and influential Nuzlockers of all time. Check out his stuff down below. The day before this new ROM hack was set to release, I was invited by Deck and probably the greatest Nuzlocker in the world, Pokemon Challenges, to compete in a race against 13 of the best Nuzlockers on Twitch. The competitors included Bloody, Flygon HG, Moxie, Burrito, Captain Kid, Drew, Run and Bun, Yudai, Proudy, Stefan Sunny, Squirk, Lucelia, and Jackie Internet. And of course, me. The rules of this event were standard, including the most generic Nuzlocke rules. One encounter per route, no duplicate encounters, when Pokemon faint, they are dead, and no items outside of held items in battle. There were two nuances to this run, however. First, the level caps were auto-enforced by the game, but there were some select rare candies hidden throughout the map that would allow a player to gain an extra level before defeating the next boss. This is particularly useful early on, where a level cap of 21 might stop us from getting an evolution at like 22. And the second nuance was the speed up rule. While speeding up was always allowed outside of battle, the battles had to be taken on at normal speed, with the caveat that any battles completed in previous attempts may be sped through. This wasn't about surviving the longest in one attempt. The objective of the entire event was to be the first to successfully defeat four gym leaders. If resetting and getting more attempts in helped players get there faster, then so be it. So now that we've established our rules and you've already read the title, how did I almost win? And maybe a better question, how did I lose? It all started in Little Root Town, where all good journeys start. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have seen my other Nuzlocke and content, but I really like to break down strategies when I've thought them out a bunch. But I received my documents for Pokemon Run and Bun exactly 30 minutes before game time. I didn't have time to look at anything. I used that 30 minutes to do a starter analysis in which I chose Chimchar as the optimal pick. Early Mach Punch, as well as Flame Wheel and mid-game Fake Out, I thought it had the most potential. With the first level cap set to 12, I powered to May, defeated her, and grabbed Pokeballs from Oak. We grabbed Skitty, Sizzlipede, Surskit, Bound Sweet, and Natu to accompany our monkey. In hindsight, this team was very, very nice. These encounters might have been optimal. Skitty was holding a Moonstone and Steenie would evolve immediately, so we walked into Route 102 with two solid second stage Pokemon. And Route 1 wasn't hard, although picking up Male Solandit from Route 104 and punting our Kroganok encounter in Petalburg by forgetting that Delcaddy's normalize ability made Wake Up Slap do standard damage, our first attempt was already a little brittle. Now, on Route 104 was a bounce Magikarp on a mission. I'm officially a part of the, I guess. I guess so. I'm just gonna have to deal with this. This is what it is. <coughs> Don't para. <coughs> or para. I was thinking that might be fun too. Lit, dude. I don't have a better place to be. Be singing to the sky or something. Doesn't it bounce have a missed chance? Wake up slap. Are you kidding, dude? Now you attack. Now you attack. Okay, dude. Why? Go. Dude, no way. Absolutely no way. Dude, I got double parried. Literally one hit would have killed this thing. My whole team was weak to bounce and I didn't realize that Magikarp only had five bounce PP. I'm so rad red pilled, it's insane. Now, I'd be lying if I told you that I expected the Aqua Grunt to pop out of the woods like this. Opening with Natsu against Carvana was a little bad. This is a horrible matchup. All right, I'm going to double pivot here. I'm going to go here on Bite. I'll pivot to Senior on Water Pulse. Carvana, not Carvana. Um, what's it called? Cersei. Dude, what? Dude, resisted Bite did that much damage. You would die. It might just Bite again, man. 
Okay, it didn't. Please don't confuse. This has Poison Fang, man. This is gonna hurt. My luck is incredible today. Every single thing that could happen to me that <laughs> has happens to me. Okay. Okay. What is this? Dude, literally ever. I'm surprised I didn't get flinched. And I'm surprised I hit. All right. Let me just see something. Carvana versus Chimchar. Obviously, my defense isn't super high here. This should be... Oh, this could be anything. This could be Bite again. Uh, can't be Poison Fang. Uh, not Poison Fang. Water Pulse, though. It's got a 24 speed stat. I don't have anything faster than it. My best bet is to hope Poison Fangs and then doesn't kill me, but I, ca I can't afford Zack here, man. This should Poison Fang. It should, it should Poison Fang. Sick, thank you. Now nah, I can just be whatever it wants. I should be Aqua Jet. Show me Aqua Jet. I don't think Anti Cheat kicks in, does it? No, it doesn't appear to. One hundred percent confused chance. Get off this bubble beam and get the speed drop, or don't, or just don't. Um, I just wipe. I just wipe. You survived? Wait, hold on. I might not wipe. Come on, Pete. It's just a fish. True? Come on, man. All right, we are faster. I got off the nice shade. Yeah, I might just reset early. Yeah, this is a, this is an L, boys. I didn't know he was walking out of the forest. He's faster than me. Okay. I was the first person to reset. I was behind the field instantly, but I could speed up until that grunt fight, and there wasn't too much ground to make up. I just needed to keep moving. New run, new me. Chimchar... Screlp, Lillipup, Timpole, Abra, Panida. Were these encounters worse? Yeah, probably, but I didn't have time to be picky. I stormed through Route 1 with no issue and managed to pick up our Petal Brink encounter this time around. Lotad, fake out mons are OP in Nuzlocks. This felt nice. Now, I just picked up Male Salazzle in that last run from 104. Upon doing some research, screw that grass for all it's worth. I'm fishing here. Horsey, welcome to the team. I crushed the Magikarps this time around. It's a little embarrassing that this is a flex to me, but it is what it is. I then took care of Lady Cindy before arriving at my personal best. This time, things went a little smoother. Growl from Temple nerfed Carvana before I asked Lotad to sink and absorb into the evil Piranha. Another one finished the beast. Kroganuk fell to Skrelp and Eggs lost to Panida. The first big boss was behind us and we had some catching up to do. With some taking things slow and others leaps and bounds ahead of me at this point, I spent the next little while dicing my way through trainer battles as quickly as I could. Planning was sparse, but I briefed each team before taking them on. I picked up a Makuhita, killed a Remoraid because it was trash, and added a Sfeel to the roster. I'm a sucker for big Hariyama and wall reigns, so this was good. The next fight was against a maniac named Georgie. The dangerous mod on his team was Belly Drum Headbutt Munchlax, but Mach Punch was too much for the physically frail baby bear and Georgie rolled over. It was in this cave that I realized I had an infinite repel that I forgot to use. Accidents happen, and Onyx definitely fit that bill. Oh well, buddy, welcome to the team. Something something less attack than an Oddish, I don't know. Following the docks as we went to Slateport was interesting. I didn't really know what trainers were who, although it appeared as though for the first time a trainer was optional. I tried to dodge the tuber on the south by sticking to the top of the beach. Turns out Ricky could see me with his eagle eye vision, and so could Haley, who was hiding under an umbrella. We love optional double battles. I guess almost everyone had the same idea that I did and took this one in double battle fashion. It was tough but not impossible. My strategy here was to leave Apom alive and target down the right lane until only one trainer remained. Fortunately, the monkey whipped up some sand attacks that spared me some HP, and I was able to capitalize on 2v1s to finish the fight. Some pivoting and attacking as Nidorino and Luxio stepped in guaranteed us the victory. We'd made it to Slateport. We fished up Choodle and prepared for the back-to-back -back boss in the Slateport Museum. It was a major roadblock, entering the second fight having taken damage, and having only six slots to deal with two battles is always a challenge even if these two guys only brought three Pokemon each. The first fight was easy, with only Skrelp giving me problems, stalling the heck out of my own Skrelp. The second fight, however, was tough. Navigating both Toxapex and Frillish felt fine, but trying to best a speed boost Whirlipede hurt like heck, especially when it started firing off rollouts on Ponida. Okay, so the next one's doing 32 damage. 
burn would have been nice. It's okay. Wait, I'm going to Lombre and I'm going fake out. Yep, I'm going to Lombre. I'm going to go and fake out. Don't crit me. Please don't crit me. Please don't crit me. Please do not crit. Please don't crit. Please don't crit. Please don't crit. Oh my god, a crit and we survived. Lombre, you're insane. I go fake out here. Stop that nonsense. Onyx finished the fight easily and we were moving on to the first gym. I was stoked about it. With a new level cap of 21, we were able to add the evolution Celio and Cedra to the team. Cedra seemed particularly interesting to me, packing pretty incredible physical bulk, a strong special attack, and reasonable speed. At this point, I was probably dead center of the pack. Burrito, Drew, Stefan, and Squirk led the way, each pushing Brawly while I wrapped up this fight. Prouty and Captain Kid also sat just ahead of me. Brawly's gym was pretty easy, except for the optional double battle that everyone except for Burrito ran into. I'll be honest, guys. When this double battle happens, I thought it might be over, but I think I had the greatest first turn in RNG history. Lit. That's what I thought. Show me the burn. Thank you. That's so nice. I'm keeping Meditate alive. Screw the rest of it. Oh my god! Insane! Insane stuff from Panida! Woo! All right. Well, who do I want to take out now, huh? With Metatite being the lesser threat, I targeted down the left lane and did as much damage as I could. Freyloom fell, as did Baneri, and the final Mianfu came out and found the same fate to Low Sweep Monferno. With only the right lane alive and two Pokemon targeting it at all times, we were able to navigate a deathless route. While this was happening, Squirk found a fun and cool glitch that punted his run back to the start. Rest in peace, Squirk's first run. That was devastating. Burrito and Drew entered the Brawly fight at nearly the same time, as I found myself just a few paces behind. Drew's Brawly team here was undoubtedly worse, as Palpatode and Onyx didn't do nearly as much damage as Burrito's Qfin and Krabby. And Zatu was a hard upgrade over Drew Staravia. Yeah, I don't know how Drew can kill this. Maybe it's smoke screen is the win condition here. I mean, basically, he just needs to figure out how to kill this with uh, with Zatu to set up a kill with it so Zatu can then combust Yeah, because he right. needs to kill the Combuskin and if Psybeam hopefully chaos. Yeah, I mean, even so, like, he just can't switch into it. Then he's fucked, right? Is Drew going for Twister flinches? Yeah, I guess I so. I guess, yeah. <laughs> what else do you do at this point, right? No. Yeah, Smokescreen is probably yeah. the better out. While Burrito cleaned up and finished with Zatu, Drew found his lack of quality Pokemon punishing him over and over. He was headed for a reset. I caught up to Stefan and started Brawly around the same time as him. My team wasn't super great here either. Onyx and Palpatode failed Drew, why wouldn't they fail me? And I was literally bringing Panita for the flame body potential. And that's it. That's a terrible idea. But I didn't have another. My team wasn't getting better by waiting longer and planning more. I had to try. I used Disable to stop Cubfru from beating Kadabra with Sucker Punch on the opening move. I knew it was guaranteed to try and kill with it, and I was able to use Confusion twice after that to finish the job. And then things got tricky. Okay. This thing wants to retaliate. Go in here. You could also just go headbutt. We'll see. Wako is doing Brawly, and he's doing the same Screech Ooh. Onyx strategy. Oh. Okay. There it is. What if I Screech, and then I pivot to Monferno? What's Monferno's check? Oh, well, Monferno's check is Scraggy. Okay, I'm Screeching here. So you already yeah. created a strategy here, Drew. <laughs> Citrus Berry, thank you. Not not Citrus. This is gonna suck, but it's what I've got. Wait, hold on. If I go for it again, wait, I'm gonna go Bulldoze. Cause I don't want it to switch out, but I want it speed to drop. Oh yeah, that was actually really smart. And then you can yeah. just one hit kill it. You don't have to deal with another retaliation. Oh, but he's clicking yeah. Bulldoze now. That's gonna force the low bunny out. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's clicking Bulldoze. Yeah. He didn't do he it right. Uh, yeah. Um, 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 okay. Um, with him on top of the floor, it's going to use... It could be Fake Out or Brick Break here. Um, my check for this. Do I go to Palpatode? Palpatode's my counter for what? Oh, I don't have a Polaroid counter. I took I took uh, Lombre out. That's fine. So I think I go here on what could be Fake Out or Brick Break. It's not Rock Slide, and that's what matters. So let's go there. Go and mock punch. Show me the burn. Please show me the burn. Please show me the burn. Flame body? Didn't get it. Bummer. Um, this should be rock slide. I might sack Panita here. Wait, I can get to Palpatoke for free. If it's gonna be, but I don't want to take damage for no reason if I don't need to. I'm thinking this is likely rock slide. I sack I'm sacking here. I'm sacking here. Now it could it could roll brick break. 
And then low roll, but I don't think it will. Can we get a para? Para would be so nice. Didn't get it. We went rock slide. Good night, Panida. Okay. Wacko's ponytail just went down to Brawlium. With Lopini back out, my options were pretty limited, but I used Cedra's bulk to power through. Paula World stepping out was bad for me, so I opted to let Amon go. I think he's like guaranteed bubble beam. Man, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. Um, 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 Letting go of Onyx feels bad, but I think it's what I've got. I think I let go of Onyx and Kadabra. But what does that even put me in position to do? Paula World's not Paula World's delivering the goods with hidden power grass. I'm I get rocked. Um Right? Let me just palpitoed. I don't die. I don't technically die. So, um, Onyx Kadabra sack into palpitoed is a way to beat Paula World. What would that leave me with? It would leave me with, I don't know, but I don't know how I beat Combuskin if I do that. I'd have to rely on Monferno, I guess, but Monferno's not doing it. Um, and Monferno needs to beat Scraggy still. So, what exactly is my play here? Um, 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 okay, well, let's play with what I've got, okay? Uh, this is... What I really could use here is Kadabra to confuse the Paula Whirl. That's fine. Good night, Onyx. Oh, seven, boys. And now, trust me, guys, this is gonna work. I just need... Yeah, he did just say, trust me, guys, this is gonna work, so... They're confused here. <laughs> That's a wacko classic. Uh. Oh, he gets oh, the confusion? No! Please! Please! Oh? Is it self-hit? Oh, rep. You hate to see it. Unlucky. Okay. Uh, we're switching out. <laughs> I go mud shot into mud shot, unfortunately. Wait, I might be able to keep Palpatoad alive. Nope. Never mind. Nice survive. That was good. Palpy finishes Paula Whirl. And now I'm left with what? Mock Punch finished Combuskin, and the final Pokemon Scraggy took the field. I. Crap. My plan here was to leer, but if I leer, it two shots me. So I think my plan here is always to... If I low sweep, I do the most damage, but if I flame wheel, I get burn chance, which would give me a second turn at being alive, which would be nice. Um, I have to roll for crit, I think. I think it gives me the best odds, as opposed to rolling for burn. No way burn is more valuable here. Well, not more valuable, but more likely. I just go low sweep. Well, this sucks. Okay. We're going to get off a second hit here. Scraggy, you could really be the homie here <laughs> and uh and go for uh rest. We'd be we'd be best friends for a long time. Well, we uh we won, I think. That was it, right? Yeah. Burrito had the lead and I was tailing him. My box sucked at this point, but I only had to win four badges to win this competition. If this was a real run to the Elite Four where I was trying to win the whole game, I'd have reset in a heartbeat. But here, I mean, I had Hariyama now and Dreadnought. A level 25 cap here wasn't huge, but it was playable. In Petalburg Forest, I picked up Steeny, who immediately evolved into Serena. My best grass type up to this point was Lombre, so this was a pretty pickup. I powered through the root battles on the way to Rustboro, except for this one small and tiny mistake. Went Electroweb. That's a bummer. Okay. Abra, please, please, please target the Celio. Please, I am begging you to target the Celio. Don't make me lose Dreadnought here. Okay? That's fine. Please kill, kill the Abra. Just kill it. Yes, okay! Above Rustboro, I was able to pick up a Quillfish. It was a pain of a catch and maybe not valuable at all, but who knows? I also grabbed the Thai Rogue from the East, who promptly evolved into Hitmonlee, the undisputed best Nuzlocking Hitmon. There was another double battle on Route 116, and it was tough. Well, it's not great, but I think it's my best play. Should be Water Pledge on the right. Give an Ice Punch. Oh, that sucks. Okay, this is gonna hurt. Don't freeze. Good thing is Simapore really can't touch. Hitmonlee, water pledge on them. Okay, okay. This is gonna hurt. Don't crit, don't crit, don't crit, don't crit. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yep, that, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! After clearing the left lane, I pretty cleanly navigated the remaining Pokemon on the right. Simapore didn't want to deal with Lombre or Serena, and Masquerain wasn't super excited to meet Hariyama and Rock Tomb Dreadnought. The next trainer was a horrible matchup for me. I had no special attackers capable of dealing the damage that Tangela needed to go down to. Hitmonlee couldn't brute force it, and my backup plan of Hariyama was an awful plan. After using all of the HP on both Hitmonlee and Hariyama, Tangela was down to more than half of its health. Bro was chugging. I was getting outplayed. 
Pivoting through Serena on Giga Drain, I baited in Sludge Bomb so I could pivot to Seedra and kill with Aurora Beam. It wasn't perfect, but it was the best I had. Cramorant had nothing on Dreadnought as long as we rolled the 50-50 range with Rock Tomb. Okay, that's fine. I'm fine with that. All right, I go Rock Tomb here. I'm just happy it wasn't surfed the first time. Here we go. Yes! Yes! Okay, thank you. Oh my god. Woo! Raichu was the final Pokemon and Serena had its number. Tropkick was too strong and the mouse dissipated. GG's, pal. Shout out to Moxie who called it a night after beating a trainer two after Brawly. It wasn't a wipe, just a time constraint. Up to this point, Moxie was rocking the third best run in the competition and had a pretty good box with him. The fight before Rust Surf Tunnel was pretty hard. In hindsight, probably didn't need this encounter before Roxanne. Might have foregone this one until later if I had thought about it. Still, I opted to roll the 50-50 on this Primeape knockout. I remembered right now. If I could get a um, two-shot here, would be really nice. Could really use it. Yeah, I think this is a guaranteed crit. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, if this doesn't kill. Oh, thank goodness, dude. Woo! Oh, man. For the record, Burrito had similar fun with this piece. All right, uh, Burrito is dead to one acrobatics roll here, apparently. Come on. Why is it? He lives it! He got one HP. Oh so my good. god. That's the artillery difference. Is that this is actually insane. Rog and Rolla was the reward. Sick. Roxanne's trainer battles were pretty breezy, with Hitmonlee sweeping the first and Hariyama sweeping the second one. And this is where I officially caught up to Burrito. Are Waco and Burrito in the same fight? They are. Uh, oh yeah, yes, they, are. they are. They're head, yeah, yeah, head to head. just like... Side by side, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Or Wacko actually entered this fight first, I think. Oh, yeah. I don't think he did any other gym. Is it... Can you choose the order of these gym trainers? I think you can choose mm -hmm. one and two. Okay. The third fight was also a Hitmonlee sweep. I'm officially calling Hitmonlee the prize of 116. This thing got insane use. Burrito and I were both prepping for Roxanne. What was the difference between our plans, however? You can tell that Ra Wacko plays a lot of Radical Red because uh, his... It's always interesting to see how other how different Nuzlocke's look like use the UI different because he... He goes to the PC, he deposits everything, and then he takes all mm. items off. And, yeah. that, and yeah, that seems like, that's yeah, that that's seems like the, from a game where you swap like held items a lot, like a lot more a common. Lot. I didn't have half of the box that Burrito had, so I didn't have that many options. I had 10 total encounters to choose from. What else could I do? Okay. Can I kill this with double kick? Yeah, I killed it with double kick right off the jump. Oh, an iron head. Okay. Don't flinch me. Don't flinch me. Don't flinch me. Please. I think I just lose if this flinches. <laughs> okay, sick. Still in it, boys! <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Okay, that was fun. That was, and by fun, I mean absolutely terrifying. Okay, I thought I could get it to do something else. It didn't take advantage. We move on. Uh, what's out next? Zygarde. Okay, Zygarde comes in immediately. I'm hoping we see extreme speed here. Let me just double check to make sure I'm right. Zygarde. 10% versus Celio. I do have another counter if this one doesn't work. I just would rather use this one. I am hoping for Dragon Claw or Extreme Speed would be best case scenario. Show me Extreme Speed. Show me Extreme Speed, please. Dragon Claw's fine. That's totally fine. Okay, now I Aurora Beam. Yep, this is gonna suck. Don't crit. Do not crit me. I have a revenge kill. I would rather not have to use it. Please don't make me use my revenge kill. Thank you. Sweet. Zygarde falls. Does this kill? Wow. Double higher. Probably not. It kills. Okay. It kills. It kills. All right, he's got the, right, got the demon down. Wacko looks to take the lead here. All right. Show me Aurorus, please. Aurorus is the easiest one to pivot out of. Lit. Okay. Um, we're going to pivot to Hariyama here, hoping that it uses what? I don't really care. Use whatever you want. Not body slam. I guess power gem would be best. There's power. It's fine. Uh, speed up drop would be a bummer, but we'd be okay. Okay, there we go. Do I need to fake out here or can I just kill this? I just, there we go. Cool. Um, what's up next? Soul Rock. It's actually really good for me, I think. Is Soul Rock guaranteed to use Zen Ed, a Psycho Cut here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. It's less good now that I look at it. Um, okay, Psycho Cut. I guess a, a crit here would be a bummer. It's fine. Uh, not being Rock Slide's good, a crit would be okay. This is the two shot. This should use rock slide. It went psycho cut again. It's high crit. That's why. 
Wait, no, it's just there's overlaps. Didn't crit me anyways. Okay. Good night. Soul Rock. Uh, what does it show me next? Lunatone, maybe? Caracosta. What's the see a kill with? Zen Headbutt? Ancient Power. Um, guaranteed kill with Ancient Power right now. I'm going to pivot through... Because it's not going to use Razor Shell. I'm going to pivot through Hariyama. Get a, a fake out on it. Ooh, could it send Headbutt right now? No, it couldn't. So, yeah. I am going to pivot through Hariyama into Lombre on what should be Razor Shell the next turn. It could be Zen Headbutt. It is what it is. Ancient Power. There it is. Don't boost. Don't boost. I can get a little chip damage off with a fake out here, which is nice. Hariyama is guaranteed. Uh... Yeah. Ooh. I wanted it to be guaranteed Razor Shell, but I think it's guaranteed Zed Headbutt, which does that even work out for me? No, I take way more damage this way. Okay. Uh, sick. That's awesome. Um, cool. I should have just switched in on Ancient Power, but okay. This is what it is. Roll with the punches. Yep. No fake out again. Oh, I forgot you were faster. That's awesome. I don't care if Lombre dies. That's fine. Okay. All right. Um, is Aqua Jet going to kill me from here? Maybe you could go hard Serena, but so Ancient Power is kind of risky anyway. It is scary oh. anyway, so. Uh, he's going hard, yes! Serena. Huge. Yes! Oh, that was good. Catch the Aqua Jet. Oh my god. god. It's, it's always it's saw that it was bad, yeah. so it went for the priority. Yeah, that's that was really, really smart. Good. Yeah, that was smart. Super sick. Yeah, yep. that was really well played. All right, now we finish it. Uh, this is a bit of a bummer. It's a little bit awkward uh, because of weakness policy. Um, is weakness policy going to bury me here? Serena. Weakness policy will boost its, what, special attack by two or one? I think it's going to go for hypnosis anyways. Do I even care? <laughs> I care. I very much care. Um, okay, uh, let me just see something. What's my What's my attack stat? I don't have this in the calc. Oh my god, I'm horrible. I have the worst offensive Serena of all time. Yeah, my attack, my attack IV is in the the four to ten range. All right, sick. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna stomp, I guess. He says it's seventy five percent for trap to kill. Nice. I think he kills here. Right. Well played. Zero death box. Really, this is really well shit. From a really bad brawly to a Everybody really solid rocks in. Yeah. Well, go takes the lead. That's insane. That was so well played, too. Yeah, I don't know how I got here either. My run should have ended battles in battles ago. I should have been speeding up trying to get back here. Still, for a brief moment and with a pretty brutal box, I had a lead. There was a very easy fight that needed to be finished in Rust Turf Tunnel where the opponent sat six levels underneath the cap. In Verdant Turf Town, I picked up a Nidorina who immediately evolved into a Nido Queen. Is Nido's best ground move here up to this point? Mud Slap? Don't talk about it. So yeah, so Mud Slap right now is a two shot. If uh, if we get lucky, I'll be honest, guys, not promising. Oh, we're not. I thought it was gonna shift gear. Oh, we're cracked. As with Radical Red, the hardest part of this game and most Nuzlocks for that matter are the double battles. Double battles increase the variety of outcomes and therefore the chances the Pokemon might fall from a double target, double crit, or something else crazy. It's nearly impossible to account for everything that could happen. So Nuzlockers try. And try I did against this next one. After a brutal first turn, I rock tombed and slid the opposition to clear the Orb Beetle. My goal was to clear the left side and then the right. Hypno did Dark Void both Seedra and Dreadnought, which was devastating. Which I don't think it will be, but it could be. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Okay, there's one target. Take it easy on my boy. I needed. Did we need to hit through the flinch? Yeah, okay, that sucks. Wait, oh, that's awful. Do I lose Dreadnought? I don't? Okay. Quillfish beat Toxicroak as well as the oncoming Hariyama with Waterfall. I checked, by the way. Dreadnought had exactly one HP left. Oh my God. I think Bur Burrito's catching up. He's laid right at that double that Wacko just finished. Neck and neck still. Yeah, Burrito has been going faster after Roxanne. I love when Burrito says this is a roll to kill. <laughs> True. <laughs> Burrito would pass me here with more tools available as I struggled to find answers. While I did go in with a very quick attitude to Roxanne, I felt that since Burrito and I were at the same point now, I should settle down and focus on winning the battles cleanly. The real problem though is that my answers were getting worse. The fights were getting harder and my box wasn't getting better. 
This next double battle looked demonic. And I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I have no idea what the Flannery level cap is. Not a single clue. I didn't actually count to see if this kills. I just hope it does. I don't really care about discharge. The only thing I am concerned about is obviously the para here, but... Para would be a bummer. Didn't get it. Sweet. Okay, Amolga's not doing any damage to anybody, so who cares? Just dropkick kill. Sweet. Cool. Show me lantern. Sick. Ab electric. Cool. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. That's fine. Kill my boy Lantern. That's fine. Can Tropkick please kill the Lantern? That'd be so cool. That'd be so cash money. Oh, bummer. All right. I need Force Palm to do it now, which is a bummer. Oh, interesting. I did not see that coming. Great. Lantern falls. Cool. Okay. Is Serena scared of Ice Beam Marowak, man? Uh, actually, kind of. <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah, I'm going to stay in with you, and I'm going to Force Palm you. Do I want to... No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm double pivoting. I'm going to Lombre. I'm going to Lantern. There we go. Cool. So now I just fake out Marowak, and then I just Bubble Beam it twice. Uh, I don't care about the, the Amolga boosts whatever if it goes for ice beam on lantern that's totally fine oh come on this might get spooky if i lose if i lose mulga i think i'm over it not a mulga um lombre i think i'm over it that's like fine dude no way Ooh, wacko's lamb uh lanterns got frozen okay Ooh, that's really that's tough pretty bad yeah. Yeah. right frozen by the ice beam Eric. okay thank god lantern seems like a fantastic encounter here huh i need this fake out right now oh mulga's gonna hurt me a lot this is going to hurt a lot. Okay, how much damage is Cedra taking? I misplayed. Brutal. It is what it is. Okay, do I have anything that can one shot? Ah, oh, crap. That's such a tough misplay. Okay. I can't believe I got frozen, man. Okay, I mean, I go back to Serena here and I fake out the Marowak again. I just need to hit this. Please hit this. Please hit this. Oh my god. Okay, what am I losing? Who's Marowak deciding to kill, huh? This sucks. This might be a wipe. This might be it. I'm totally giving up on Serena here. I'm trying to preserve. Oh, come on, dude. That's so dumb, man. All right, I, I don't have another. I'm out of options here. This is going to be the second time in this run that this happens to me. <sighs> this wasn't the boss of this route. The boss of this route is right here. Okay. Yeah, so... That was, that was it for me. I did have more Pokemon to play with, but it wasn't manageable. The next boss battle had way too many hard counters to me, and I had too few answers. I watched one by one as each of my Pokemon fell, even seeing a Quick Claw proc take down my Nidoqueen in the final moments. Burrito's run would continue on, grabbing another gym badge and claiming the victory of the day for himself. In the rest of the field, both Squirk and Flygon would cut their runs a few battles short of my best due to schedule conflicts. Stefan and Drew would tie for fourth with runs that ended at the first fight post Roxanne. Bloody also defeated Roxanne, but had her run cut short as the 10 hour time limit expired. My run would hold as the second best run of the day and the runner up in the run and bun ROM hack debut. I'm super stoked I was able to compete as this competition had some of the best in the world at what we did here. Coming in second place felt crazy to me. I've linked all the participants in the description. Please check them out. They're very cool. Special thank you to Dexa for creating this beautiful ROM and inviting me to join in on release day. It was a super cool event.